Uh, it's Wednesday! My dudes. So I decided to set myself on the easy mission to go find a salamander. So I went ahead and uh, Googled common salamanders of Wisconsin. And we ended up trying to track down the blue spotted salamander. And then uh, to which I thought myself, how hard could that be? You know, it can't be too hard, right? You know, I just, you know, just flip some rocks and... Hello. Oh, oh, you crutched it through there? Yeah. Yeah, was it difficult? No. No? <laughs> I got used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Firstly, in order to find a blue spotted salamander, you need to look in the proper location. You are only going to be able to find these salamanders in very specific habitats where all their criteria of needs are being met. So even though they're common, they're going to be hiding and they're going to be very secluded from any type of human interactions. They're only coming out in the spring and in the fall. So this was kind of like my last attempt to try and track these down. Blue spotted salamanders are found in one of three ecosystems, either the deciduous hardwood forest, swampy woodlands, or a carnivorous forest. Like other amphibians, blue spotted salamanders are very dependent on water. Now, they tend to stay near a vernal pool, which is like a seasonal pond that tends to be either in a marshy area or inside a forest. So think about it this way. The salamanders are very picky about which pond they choose because they need to be nutrient rich for their young and they also have to not dry up. They have to be deep enough so that the water is going to last them the whole season and their young are going to be able to grow up in these ponds and then they are going to be able to start a new life once they are able to thrive on land. Okay, and then now that we're confident with this location, I think we're ready to flip the logs and look for the salamanders. Not a huge surprise, uh, nothing under this first log, but let's keep looking. So this right here is a bald face hornet. I had no idea what this is when I flipped it over. And then I did a little bit of research. And as it turns out, there's a reason this thing is so big. This is actually the queen of the nest. The bald face hornet queens are fertilized in the fall and then they hibernate all winter under an area like this under a log. And then of course, when spring hits, they get out of their hibernation and start foraging to make their nest and then lay their eggs. Obviously, this is one of those animals where I'm just gonna put it back where I found it and not mess with it anymore.
blue spotted salamander is a member of the family of salamanders referred to as mole salamanders. They get this name because they hide under burrows, rocks, or logs like the one we just found right here. Notice how when I pick this guy up he is almost motionless. It is essential that each and every blue spotted salamander is able to slow down their metabolism because less movement means less energy. Food for them is going to be really scarce over the winter so it is very important to conserve your energy. Also, it's important to realize I should not be handling these salamanders for a long period of time. There's oils on your skin that can be kind of harmful for these salamanders. So hold them under a leaf or just hold them for a very short period of time just to make sure you're not harming the animals in any sort of way because they are very fragile. And one final tip, make sure that you are letting the salamander crawl back under its hide because if you are throwing that rocker log back on the salamander, you could do some serious damage. So just be careful. That marks the second bald face hornet queen. <laughs> My girlfriend would be freaking out if she was with me. So I was just about to call it quits, but I checked one more log right next to where we found the first blue spotted salamander. And after looking around just for a little bit, I'm like, okay, there's nothing here. And then I look back over to the left and then inside the log, I see this blue spotted salamander just sticking his head out. It was so cute. So 2019 was kind of a slow experimental year for me. Uh, this next year, 2020, I mean, it's already 2020, but once it kind of warms up, it's no longer cold as hell out. And we have animals to record other than like this bird that's annoying me in the back of my shot. Then we are going to be able to upload and then once it warms up and it's springtime, I'm going to be able to upload the content that I want to upload. But for the time being, I think I'm just going to experiment with some things and do some like more indoor style content, but still keep it animal related. But that's all I have in store for you guys. Um, make sure to hit your, hit your buttons below. You know what buttons I'm talking about. <laughs>